Welcome to Naresh I Technologies. This is Ram Chandar. In this video, I am going to talk about memories areas of uh, different variables in Java language. So, mainly we have uh, two types of variables like a primitive and a referenced variable. Again, under the primitive variable, again we have two types one is the class level, another one is local. Again, class level variables are categorized into two types. One is static uh, variables, and the one is non-static primitive variables. So, let me highlighting where exactly all these variables are stored in the JVM. Mainly, in JVM we have five memory areas. In this particular video, I am only concentrate on three memory areas. One is method area, and the one is heap area and another one is java stack area another one is java stack area now observe here the first one is method area second one is heap area and third one is java stack area so what type of variables are going to be stored in method area what type of data is stored in the method area observe here all these static variables and static methods as well as non-static methods methods are stored in the method area and one more thing is in the heap area non-static variables are stored and the one is objects are created object creation will be happen in the heap area only. Now, what about uh, Java stack area? See guys, methods are available in the method area, but execution process will be happen in where Java stack area. Java stack area is a combination of stacks. Each and every thread have its own uh, stack. For method execution purpose, every thread using have its own stack. Again, every stack is going to be classified into different different slices or different different small parts. Those parts we can call as frames. These are all what stack frame. Now, this entire part we can call as stack and this part we can call as what stack frame. This is stack and this one is what stack frame. Now, each and every stack frame again classified into here three types. Each and every stack frame classified into three types. This is the first part and this is the second part and this is what your third part. Now, what is the first part? The first part is local variable storage area. Second one is upper end stack and the third one is frame data here. Now, here lo all the local variables are going to be stored in the local variable storage area and if you are doing any operations on top of the variables, those operations are going to be happen in the upper end stack and uh, if meanwhile of program or meanwhile of method execution, if you have any exceptions, those exceptions are going to be stored in the frame data. So, we have mainly three sub areas in the Java stack area. One is local variable storage area, which is used to hold the local variables and uh, upper end stack, it is used to do some operations on top of the variables and frame data. Meanwhile of executing the program, if you are facing any exceptions, those exceptions details are available are stored in which area frame data. So, let me write a small program to explaining all these memory areas. So, here let me take one coding part here, small programming class A. Now, here I am taking one variable like uh, static int A equal to triple one and uh, int b equal to what triple 2 after that i am taking public static void main after that 
am taking here into C equal to triple three. Okay, here system dot out dot uh, or simply I am taking like uh, into D equal to you can take any uh, value also here not a problem. Now let me write A plus C system dot out dot println D. So this is my small program. So first I am highlighting method area. What type of things are available in the method area? Static variables, nothing but variable A. According to our program, A will getting the one memory. In that memory, triple one V is going to be placed. And uh, entire uh, method is going to be stored in where method area itself. Entire uh, static main method is stored in the method area only. What about non-static variables? Non-static variables are not available in the heap area. Why? We are not creating any object. So, whenever main method is executing by the main thread, in that particular scenario, in this uh, Java stack area, in this local variable storage area, we are getting variable C as well as we are getting one more variable like what here? D. These D and C variables are stored in the where Java stack area. Now, I am doing some operation A plus C that will be happened in the where in operand stack here A plus B operations is going to be happen A plus C. Meanwhile of doing anything if you are getting any exception that exception will be hold in the frame data. Now, assume I am creating one object new a. This is what anonymous object. So, objects are created in which area? Objects are created in the heap area. Whenever objects are created in the heap area, automatically variables also non-static variables also stored in where are heap area only. In the non-static loading phase, the value is 0. After that, the 0 will be replaced with the non-static initialization phase. 0 will be replaced with what? Triple 2. So, here static variables initially here also a is also getting what 0 only in the static initialization phase this 0 will be replaced with what triple 1. So, here all the static variables are available in the method area, non-static variables and objects creations are available in the heap area and the local variables are stored in the local variable storage area and operations will be available in the operand stack. If you are getting any exception those details will be hold by the frame data. Whenever object is created definitely one memory is allocated to non-static variables assume that memory is what 1010 0, 1, 0. this is what here 1010 0, 1, 0. this is a very fundamental uh, memory representation of a small java program understand or not. So, I hope you enjoy this video for more videos uh, please subscribe Naray channel thank you.